Welcome to a new video on my channel, hope you're doing fine. Today I want to give you some information about the upcoming merger between SilverQuest Acquisition Corp and Tim Hortons China. The merger vote for the business combination is set for August 18th, so this Thursday. And the company expects to um, trade under the new ticker THCH after the business combination and beginning on August 2020th. Before we jump into the presentation, um, some positive news in this case. There has been friendly um, adjustments to the uh, investor friendly adjustments to the merger agreement. The um, valuation has been reduced from 1.688 billion to 1.4 billion, and there has been an additional financing of up to almost 195 million from institutional investors to fully fund their uh, five-year business plan. So this is definitely a good sign and also positive that uh, there has been such a bad economic um, circumstance right now for these companies. And in this case, this might be a positive for the investors. Before I jump into the presentation, this is no financial advice. This is just my personal private opinion. Um, something to keep in mind is that there are significant and well-known companies which are shareholders of the company. One, RBI, Restaurant Brands International, which own um, Burger King and also Tim Hortons. There's also Tencent, which also has been taken place in earlier funding rounds, as well as the Quiet Capital China. So these are definitely well-known and um, yeah, respectful names, definitely. Why do I find this company and this merger interesting? There is a uh, company which is a well-known name in uh, the European and North American um, com um, globe and it's now going to China and China is the fastest growth co uh, coffee market globally and the management team has, been, has a proven track record. They um, grew, as you can see over here, uh, Burger King China's expansion from 60 to more than 1200 stores definitely they know how to do it and also they know how to do it in china especially the same store sales have been, has been growing quite significantly as well as their system-wide stores in china which is right now i think a little bit uh, between 400 and 500 stores and as you can see over here they have a vision of around 2.7 thousand profit stores by 2027 so a lot of um, positive projections and yeah we'll see how this turns out and as you can see over here they claim that they have a data-driven culture and this definitely makes a lot of sense if you have Tencent as an investor there's the marketing part also the ordering part with the uh, WeChat app so this is definitely something to keep in mind on and also they have different partnerships to expand their community like with uh, Tencent they have a combination for I think two centers right now where there's a focus on esports and also different parts with different um, companies they have different themes for these um, yeah branded um, stores you see over here they have three, seg uh, three segments one is the mobile part then they have the delivery segment and also the in-store um, segment, which they are almost divided in third. In the uh, in-store, they have three different stores. Bottom is the Tim Go store, which is the smallest of all. And definitely also, I think the most interesting, but we'll come back to this later on. And then you have the classic stores with more seats. And then they have the flagship stores, which definitely is their, the highest um, standard. And as you can see, it's more of a representation part. Here's an overview of the investment highlights, as I mentioned, and I want to go over some of them. As I mentioned before, it's the fastest growing um, coffee market in the world. However, it's also a really small uh, market, to be fair. Um, but as you can see over here, the revenue growth should be around 40% over 10 years. Or has been um, almost. And if this continues, then this is definitely a good spot to be in. However, there are different competitors like Starbucks, Luckin Coffee, um, and they have around 
or more than 5,000 stores in China as well. And uh, yeah, right now, as I mentioned before, at Tim Hortons, China has around uh, between 400 and 500 stores. As you can see over here, also the pricing, they say they, they have a competitive pricing. And if compared to Starbucks, which then is the North American uh, peer group, let's say, uh, is lower than this. However, I think um, Starbucks is definitely well known in China as well, and therefore, yeah, they have to reduce the price in comparison to Starbucks. As I mentioned before, they are also trying to build communities and with different uh, companies and also different apps. They they really try to get a lot of traffic, and yeah, I have to highlight WeChat again because they. Um, are an investor and therefore they also want the company to succeed which they might um, help by redirecting traffic to the site so this might be something which might definitely help a lot you can see over here a lot of member growth definitely from a low part low base it's still growing it's a good sign and also a lot of mobile tickets so this is also something to keep in mind because the yeah uh, ghost doors they have a the highest uh, margin and therefore it's it's good that they order a lot mobile which is definitely a lot more established and further um, distributed in china as in america and europe as well they also have different um, key suppliers tier one tier two so they have uh, opp different opportunities to change or maybe um, substitute these and you can see the purchase price mix Dairy is quite high with 31%. However, I think it's still uh, well balanced and it could be definitely a lot worse. Um, yeah, this is the slide I, I showed before. And the proven track record of the management is definitely a good sign. And you can see over here, if they pull this off, there's a huge growth in the future. And this would definitely then uh, be, be a good sign. But we'll see how this plays out. If you have a look at their projections and also what their goal is for the different um, timelines, so they have the goal of, say here, 388 of um, stores by the end of 2021, which is already over. And I think they achieved 300 stores at the end of October and in the, I think, mid to end um, January, they achieved the 400 store. So I'm not really sure if they made it on time. However, given the circumstances, I think this is still a really good, good achievement. As the management team again, and now let's over to the financial information. As you can see over here, the quarterly performance has been not that good in the end of 2019 and 2020. However, I think this is due to the lockdowns which have been really strict in China. And afterwards, there has been huge, huge growth, even though there have been also lockdowns, maybe not in the extent which have been in, 20, in the beginning of 2020, but still, I think there has been a negative, negative impact due to the lockdowns. Keep in mind, most of the um, uh, slides are in uh, Chinese one. I think there's, I think, one exception. And if you compare it to... Um, US dollars in the first quarter of 2021. These are around 50 million of revenue. And I think I mentioned it before, the same store sale growth has also been increasing, which is always a good sign. I'm not sure why I show here the difference from Q2020 and how they're different first halves. So yeah, we'll see. Revenue growth which is their expectance or their projection right now is, is definitely really high with an, a CAGR of around 60%. And they expect around 100 million of revenue in 2021. I didn't find the numbers, unfortunately. They want to more than double this by the end of 2022 to around 300 and, uh, 234 million of revenue. And then in um, 2026, they project to around 1.8 one three billion of revenue US dollars and yeah 
definitely the HS and EBIT upper store, which yeah, has increased quite a lot, as you can see over here. And they cancel out, pencil out the four different drivers. The first is new store openings, as you can see over here. In the beginning, they want to start with around 250 new stores, and then at the end of 2026, they want to increase the number of new stores by more than 550 per year and to compare this as i mentioned before starbucks has um, i think more than 5000 stores right now and they add additional 600 per year so this is so it's possible definitely possible i'm not sure if it's yeah it will be possible in four to five years but definitely these numbers are not that far out of reach and I think if they really um, perform as they project then this should be given. The second uh, driver should be same store of sales growth which they project to be around 8%. We've already seen this is higher right now however I think this should decrease in the future or the, the increase should decelerate. Cox efficiency not really a lot to talk about I think definitely you could these with a uh, higher um, output and also with higher volumes. The rent, they also see some um, opportunities to reduce the cost over here. And this overview is outdated, however I didn't find a, a newer one. As you can see over here it's 1.4 billion now, it's lower. The cash to balance sheet is still 315 million I think. I didn't see any changes over here. And um, yeah, you can see over here different contributions. 80% is the ex existing shareholders. So the uh, spec shareholders get around 16% of the pie. They also give an overview about their competitors. And as you can see over here, they have the same valuation as Starbucks. Um, yeah, given the fact that they will be, or the company will be, are raising their revenues a lot faster. I think um, they should be a little bit higher, but, but we'll see later on when we compare them to the Dutch pros. This is also what the company highlights that they think that uh, the modern China is undervalued compared to their peers. And they gave this case study of Dutch pros, which has a lot of mo a lot more stores. As you can see over here in, in the US, uh, more than 400 million of revenue, comparison to modern China has 50 million of revenue, so it's it's hard to compare these. However, as you can see over here, um, the I think here is uh, the right price. Uh, the implied EV times revenue is 9x, so it's a lot higher than uh, to modern China. The price is I think always around 44 right now. In the other market, it went down to around 44. So, which will show maybe the recorded earnings. Um, and yeah, it's now at the same price almost. So, yeah, something to keep in mind. And they say that they are undervalued compared to these companies. Let's now look at the historical, historical financials. As you can see over here, the company is still losing money. And this is the relevant number, around 22 million of uh, net loss for 2020. And as you can see over here, also the adjusted store contribution is negative. Definitely makes a lot of sense, in my opinion. Uh, as you can also see over here that uh, the general and administration expenses are the highest uh, number, which something to keep in mind. However, I'm sure you're not here for the historical financials, you're here for the outlook. And this is the, the slide in million US dollars now. Um, they project, as I mentioned before, around 1.18 billion in revenue of the end of 2026. And they pencil out the different number of stores mentioned over here so a lot of growth and will be really interesting to see if they can pull this off and yeah as i mentioned before the burger king 
or the management has been uh, with Burger King China and they successfully um, increased the, sh the system uh, based stores um, from 16 to more than 1200 so maybe this is also possible from yeah around 300 to 1.7 thousand uh, at 2.7 thousand and lastly what i mentioned before is the differences in payback as you can see over here the teams go stores have a payback period between 18 and 24 months whereas the classic store has a payback period between 20 and 30 months and I reckon the um, highest tier, the flagship stores, have a lot higher payback period. However, that's, I think, a different purpose. As you can see over here, CapEx is a lot lower, and also the margin is a lot higher. So this is something uh, to keep in mind, and I'm not really sure if they divide it by different stores. However, I would really look out how many Tim's Go store they um Add as addition to the, to the stores in general and then see how fast the expansion is really going so to sum it up i think uh, this is a really interesting business model and established business model now expanding to different countries and especially china there's a lot of risk right now maybe also this uncertainty and fear uh, is also a good time to invest right now um, I will definitely be looking into the company and um, will definitely follow the merger. Not really sure how it pans out in mean, the given um, circumstance. I think there might also be some possibility of an yeah, increase due to um, heightened uh, interest. I'm not really sure though, since I think the uh, shares are sending up pretty high. And I think this is an interesting company and if they can perform what they project then this will definitely be really successful yeah and i will be following this company and also having a look at their um, store count and then see how this plays out so this is uh, as i mentioned before no financial advice keep this in mind and i hope you enjoyed the video and until next time have a good day bye bye